a former athlete and organic farmer, artist Gerardo Orgejo Jimenez has always found inspiration in his work. Be it in stunning table and urban scapes, still life sceneries in restaurants, or exquisite floral arrangements. Even before establishing Malipayan Farms, this gardener turned full-time farmer was already tapping into his creative side. Back in the day, he would join professional artists and spend an afternoon each week painting. While Jejo traded paintbrushes for gardening tools, when his own family started growing, he rekindled his passion for art in 2015 and hasn't stopped painting since. Using watercolor as his main medium, Jejo translates his experiences into carefully rendered paintings and sketches. From scenes from his travels to meticulously prepared table settings to the beautiful interiors of top restaurants and memories of meals with loved ones. Watercolor's transparency helps achieve a luminosity that for me stands out among the available mediums. And that is why my favorite medium is watercolor. How does one arrange seemingly disparate objects into something that would be considered a work of art. That is really the exercise, the task of a still life painting. Here in this table, we have all these things from, from pottery to utensils to fabric to flowers. And the task of the artist is really to put them in a certain order, an arrangement which would attract the eye. Uh, it is also called the composition. The way I would describe composition is basically an arrangement of the major shapes. It is something that would attract the viewer even from afar. Even before they see the details of your painting, they're already attracted by it because of the arrangement of shapes. And that is really the composition. Once we have finalized the arrangement, that I will use for the still life painting. The next stage I will have is the initial sketch. This basically becomes the map for the whole painting. The nice thing about still life painting is you control everything. Your objects do not move. They will stay there for the whole time that you paint them. When you start a drawing, the important thing is to put your major shapes right away on your paper. Because you have to move quickly you have to figure out right away the position of each element in your painting. The major shapes, the major objects in this arrangement are the plates and the potteries. As I'm drawing also, I get a sense what are the lightest areas or the highlights. That is where the light strikes the object. And I make a note of that because watercolor is a transparent medium. You cannot paint a lighter color over a darker color it will just result in that area becoming darker. In watercolor, if you know your highlights, you have to take note of that because the way to keep that highlight is not to paint over it. And you will use the white of the paper to create that light or that highlight. I feel I have a, a drawing that's complete enough and defined enough to go to the painting stage. I mentioned that since it's a transparent medium, I have to start from light to dark. And the first stage of painting is really to establish my highlights or the light areas. So I want to set them. I mix first the colors in my palette so that I get the kind of effect I want. The thing also with watercolor is that when your pigments are wet, they will tend to bleed into each other. I'm trying to mix the initial colors that I want to appear so that once I start painting, I can draw from them immediately. I wet the paper first so that the pigment will flow freely. I have to make sure parts I will not paint on remain dry so that pigment will not seep into them. By putting the water, I'm able to 
more or less lead the pigment later to where I'd want them to go. There's no pigment yet. It's just pure water. And if I do it this way, when I put the watercolor, it will spread more evenly. There'll be more fluidity. As I'm doing this, the initial parts that I had wet are starting to dry already, so I have to take that into account. The thing that fascinates me with painting is really how I see light and shadow in the subject. For me, it is fun to try to capture that. Also for me, it, it has added meaning that the light of your paper is actually already there, and the task is not to diminish it, but to preserve it. You'll notice that the colors are going past my lines, and I like that, so that it won't be too well-defined. It will have a certain hazy effect, which I really like. I'm using very light colors first now because I'm still establishing the highlights. If I go to stronger colors, I will not be able to recover the lightness of those areas. So I have to be careful uh, not to remove or destroy that, those, those highlights. I've learned to aspire for a looser way of painting. For me, it achieves a certain painterly effect. Now, you notice that the water went through, so I just have to live with that. If something like that happens, while it's wet, you can still tap it with your tissue, or sometimes you can just leave it and see what happens afterwards. completed the first layer, which is basically the light areas, and uh, I'm trying to take advantage of areas which are still damp to achieve certain effects, basically a soft effect in terms of edges. Um, it's nice to have them in your painting. I've learned through the years that an important aspect really of painting is, is also tone or the relative lightness or darkness of the different areas of your painting. Uh, this, this quality that will give your painting depth, will give the illusion of volume, space, distance, to help you capture your subject, the reality of your subject. I'm going forward here, I'm, I'm slowly going uh, darker and darker, but I'm trying to reserve those whites because really the, the white, the lighter areas of your watercolor painting are what will give the vitality to your work. If I, for example, do this, you will see the color and the darkness slowly spread around. And these are the things that uh, are gifts of the medium. Sometimes I, I'm able to anticipate or predict what will happen, but sometimes I don't. And that's also for me the fun of it. I try to judge the dampness of the paper by looking at the side. If there is a sheen, a white sheen, that means it's very wet yet. I can also feel whether it's damp. The business uh, we started had to do with growing specialty vegetables for restaurants. In the process, I'd see the restaurant during their off times. I'd see their restaurants still very well ordered. The image of those restaurants stuck with me. So when I decided to go full-time into art, I decided to have as my theme the restaurant interiors or what I call restaurant scapes. So this featured basically the interior of the restaurant and also the tables that they had. I just like the idea of still lifes and the idea of putting plates also gave an added dimension because it suggested um, the idea of gathering or of people 
eating together. Now I'm building the, the color and the tone of the painting. So I'm taking one by one each of the major shapes, each of the ceramic pieces. This stage really you're building color, you're building the tone or the relative darkness. You establish your shadow areas. And I think by doing this, you slowly create the painting itself. As the variety of dark and light areas continues to build, then you'll feel the painting really taking shape. The thing with watercolor is since it's water-based, part of the challenge and part of what you have to do is sometimes let the water, the paper dry before you continue working on a certain area. In a larger sheet of paper like what I'm using, I could also devote my time to other areas while I'm waiting for certain areas to dry. to the advanced stages. I like to do this um, more like a loose kind of way of painting, not exactly the same as the subject, but because it's loose, I find that the effect is something I like. How light is captured, how light is shown. In a way, it's not the object itself, and yet it is part of the object. To see light captured in a painting is one of my joys really, not just as a painter, but also just as someone interested in art. It's also nice to hold the, the brush towards the tip. It makes your strokes more relaxed, more, I think the term is more painterly. Make use of the way water diffuses the color. So I think the greatest role an artist can fulfill is really to continue to convey hope to others by probably showing the beauty of that is around us or by expressing certain truths to their art. I think that's worthwhile. I've tried to start um, doing the plates. You know? This involves seeing where the colors suddenly become more intense and by trying to capture those, those shifts, hopefully you are able to show the plate. I like to soften the edges so that they don't distract. So with watercolor, it's easy to soften the edge. You can use a tissue paper. You can also wet your brush and go to the edges to soften them. It's easy to do in watercolor as long as the pigment is still wet. Once it dries, it's going to take extra effort to remove those hard edges and sometimes it's already impossible. Or in trying to soften the edge, you might be damaging your painting also. Okay, so I've more or less touched the five major objects in the painting. Now I will slowly go to the other things, the flowers and the utensils. And then I'll go back to those major shapes later. Sometimes while you're, one area is drying, I, I can go back to the other spots. I have to make sure I'm looking at the subject and um, this is a bit free-flowing. Sometimes we get confused what's next. I think this, the answer always to that is go back to your subject. Just look at it, examine it some more. And it will give you more keys as to what you will have to do next. A key also to making, to trying to capture that softness in things like petals is to start very light. Again, I soften the edges. Start very light so that you slowly build your color with succeeding layers. A lot also of watercolor is mixing your, your paint. It's really about practice. It's also about having a growing knowledge and familiarity with color theory, which is basically how do you mix colors, like what are your primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, and how do you mix orange. It is basically a combination of yellow and red. You also should learn how to mute them or to reduce their intensity when necessary. So part of Mixing your colors is knowing also when to reduce their intensity, the saturation of the color or what we call chroma. It's also about learning to combine 
what we call warm warm colors or colors that have more yellow and red with the cooler colors which basically have blue and if you overlap if you alternate these kinds of colors you create a certain vibration or a certain effect in your work that's so pleasing to your eyes you know it makes your your colors more vibrant if i could recommend something very much it's to paint from the actual objects paint from life to paint outdoors as much as possible or do plain air painting because for me these activities are in themselves your teachers you learn faster because you are more in touch with your subject you can see the actual colors in life and it hastens your development in being able to mix your colors uh, judging your tones and your colors you learn these faster if you paint from life sometimes you can play with the dryness of your brush so that you can simulate certain textures I find these jars to contain several colors within themselves, so I like trying to capture those colors. Another quality that you want to have in your painting is to have harmony, but the colors are not so different from each other. I think the reason for that is it's the same light that hits them, and the quality of that light is the one that determines the actual color of all these objects. I'm continuing to build the color uh, in certain areas of the objects and you'll notice that what it does is that it creates that shadow, the shadow of that area. While the other parts are still drying, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try to define the background. I'll wet the paper again. And here I let the paper and the water do its, its thing, you know? Let it show its own properties. And by doing this also, I define certain highlights. You'll notice that the white of the jar, the tip, is more pronounced since I'm creating contrast. I'd like to make the background not too distracting, but not too plain also, so I can play around with this a bit. You'll notice in this jar, I could not define the opening that much. But now by putting the background, I can define the lip more because I create that contrast. By using also a broader brush like this flat brush, I'm able to cover more ground than with a smaller brush. The jars at the back are relatively dark, so I will not be able to create contrast if I make the background also dark. So I will still keep it light, but I'd like to add some texture also to the background. I don't have to be that faithful to the actual background. I can play around with this. And the objective is to highlight the arrangement itself. I like to add colors to the background, but I don't want it to be distracting. So I want the colors to mix with each other so that it, they create a, a more neutral color that won't distract from the table setting itself. Some basic techniques also to mute a color is to put its opposite. I want to move now back to the flowers to hopefully define the shape some more. I'm trying to create the impression of the design of the jar. Uh, these pieces that are jutting out. Here, for example, I let the color blend to the background and it creates a soft effect that for me is nice. At the same time, by making this dark, I highlight the light area of the ceramic jar. I feel sometimes that uh, I've already ruined the painting. And it helps when I tell myself it's already failed, so I might as well play with it. Freeze up, relaxes me. And sometimes I come up with something that's also still nice. Sometimes I can salvage the painting or come up with something that I did not also expect but that turned out also well. I wanted to define the table but sometimes what happens here is uh, if it's so well defined, the edges are for me too hard. I want to soften the edges again by moistening the edge. I've more or less finished the 
the major shapes and also the detail na lang yung utensils. I'd like to add some texture to the background and sometimes you just play around doing this. Sometimes you can also wet the paper this way. And the idea is to create more texture so that it contrasts with the main subject. Now I'm going to the detail of the forks and spoons and knives. So that's when my detail brush will be handy. I have to work with a very dry surface or else the color will just spread out. So I have to make sure that where I'm painting is very dry. So it's not exactly an accurate depiction of the utensils, but the important thing is you suggest it. So what I'm trying to do now is build again my darkest darks so that I define the lighter areas. So I work on the shadows and by doing so, I define even the areas, the shapes of those that are around what I'm painting. The details, I use a, a brush with a finer point. It's also a chance to put some calligraphy into the work that makes it also again more painterly allows me to do more lines. I'm going to put blue on the painting and because I will leave some places white, I will define, for example, this, the utensils by, by painting around them. Instead of painting white, you allow the white of the paper to come out. It has a certain luminosity that's, for me, really very satisfying. What creates a painting is light and shadow. While this has color, if I define more the lights, the highlights and the shadows, it will make the painting come further into life. For me, having the flowers a bit hazy and soft makes it more mysterious and also visually appealing for me. Task of the artist also is to choose where to devote more detail and where to suggest. Part of the artist's work also is to lead the eye of the viewer. So you also try to lead them into what you call a focal point. I want to define the table a bit. So with the light wash, I'd like to create a more well-defined edge. And then the other edge, I try to diffuse the background so that you don't see that edge. And then with the tissue, I can soften certain edges so that it's not monotonous. There is a variation in the edge. The light is coming here, so the shadow is somewhere here. If I hold the brush tightly, I can show these shapes more freely, more loose. And I think the effect is better. Mm -hmm.